Hello everyone and welcome to New Egg TV. My name is Paul and this is our what has previously been known as our Epic Mobile Video Editing PC. We wanted something a little bit smoother for that so we're now calling this the Handler. And I promised in the original build video when we put this together that I would follow up and uh, now seems like a good time to do that. We're actually about to road test this for the first time and we're going to be taking it to PAX East uh, coming up this weekend and uh, I wanted to share some of my results with you guys so far uh, to sort of give you an idea of how it's been performing, uh, especially considering that we uh, did that sort of custom job with the H100 cooler up at the front. So, first off, uh, just to give a quick refresher, let's go down the parts that are included in this build right now. So our CPU is the Intel Core i7-3930K. Uh, the numbers you see here actually are Newegg product numbers, so you can punch this number into the Newegg search engine to pull up the product. Motherboard is the ASUS Rampage 4 Gene. Uh, case is a Silverstone, Sugu, Silverstone Sugo SG04B FH. Uh, power supply is the Enermax Platimax 850 watt. We have 16 gigs of Kingston HyperX memory. Uh, we're running an MSI N570 GTX Twin Frozer 3 video card. We have three SSDs in the system. They're all Kingston HyperX SSDs. We have two 240 gig ones in a RAID array, and we have one 120, which we're using for our system drive. We also have a light on Blu-ray burner for our optical drive, uh, the Corsair H100 that we're using for our CPU cooler, and then uh, we added some side, or at least one side slim 120 millimeter fan and a couple Bitec hard drive adapters. Now here's another added bonus of the uh, ASUS motherboard that we chose, and that is that it's an ROG board. It's actually got some cool LED lighting integrated onto the motherboard itself, which you can see very well through the uh, side grating on our Silverstone case. So uh, it looks kind of cool from the side. It's understated, but it's lit up down there at the bottom, and then uh, it actually illuminates the SSDs right below it. Our main concern with this build was definitely going to be temperatures, since we have a lot of hardware in a small space. So uh, I started off running Intel burn test, which is uh, a burn-in test that will put a heavy load on the CPU to see what sort of temperatures we're getting. So this is just with the test running at standard. Uh, and as you can see on our uh, Intel temperatures here for our six cores and the package, uh, the hottest we got on any one core was 54 degrees Celsius running it at standard. Also ran it at very high mode and that bumped us up to 58, 59 degrees Celsius. And then also ran it at max mode uh, using the most available RAM that it could. And here, again, we only hit up to about 59 degrees Celsius at the hottest point. Um, now, that let me know that, hey, I probably have some overclocking room in there as far as temperatures go. So I went ahead and did a 4 gigahertz overclock, which is fairly modest for a 3930K, um, but just did a 4 gigahertz on the turbo boost mode. Uh, so it'll go up to that when you put a load on it. Uh, here again, running the standard test, that bumped our uh, highest temperature up to 68 degrees uh, on the package and uh, 64 degrees Celsius was the hottest we saw in any single core. Uh, running that at very high mode, it got us up to the 70 degrees range, so 74, 75 degrees on the hottest core. And then uh, finally ran that on high mode, actually very high was the, high, was the highest mode I ran it at. So running at high mode here, I uh, got up to 72 degrees, and then running at very high mode, got up to 75 degrees total, uh, 76 degrees on the package. So those were our Intel burn tests, and uh, oh, also wanted to show you we got 136 uh, gigaflops, which is a pretty nice result there for a CPU. Next up, I wanted to test our SSD uh, RAID array, so our two uh, Kingston HyperX 240 gigabyte SSDs. So here's my results for that test. As you can see, we beat one gigabyte per second total sequential read speed. Uh, 533 megabytes per second total sequential write speeds. This is running the AS SSD benchmark, which uses incompressible data, um, which really puts a, a heavy load on SSDs. Our overall score was 1,335, which is above and beyond any single uh, serial ATA connected SSD you can get. Uh, and total op <coughs> total uh, input output operations per second, excuse me, 113,000 on the read and 102,000 on the right, so very, very good performance there for our SSDs for our main drive that we'll be, we'll be using to render. I also ran the Heaven benchmark, which was just a quick test. Again, this is mainly system is built for video editing, but who knows, once you're finished video editing, maybe you want to load up a game, and it is a gaming video card. So I popped this in, we got 41.3 frames per second, overall score of 1,040. Uh, and that's mainly just thanks to our GTX 570 video card that we have in here. Finally, uh, the thing that this system is mainly intended to be used for 
is uh, for video editing, and uh, a good measure of that is encoding. Uh, so we encoded one of our uh, one of the actual uh, video projects that we've encoded on one of our other video editing systems. So this is the encode time using a Core i7-960 on the 1366 platform and the X58 chipset. Encoding time here was 21 minutes and 38 seconds when we brought that same project over here and rendered it on the handler. It cut the encode time in half down to 11 minutes and 5 seconds. And lastly, I wanted to answer some questions from this video, the original video where we did this whole build. Uh, apart from the top comment, which is to do budget gaming builds for $500 to $1,000 in likes so that I can see it. Thank you, guys. Um, lots of likes on that one. We're working on some budget gaming builds. We'll put up as many of those as we possibly can soon, very soon. Uh, some other questions. This one from 7 Om Ravenclaw who says, I think you will need a Quadro or Fire Pro video card against a GTX or Radeon one. And the answer there would be yes, that would be a nice upgrade for the system. Uh, Quadro FX Fire Pro cards, they're dedicated for uh, doing workload type stuff such as video editing, also um, motion graphics and, and that sort of thing. Uh, it would be nice. Uh, I kind of like the 570. It gives us the option to switch back and forth between gaming on the system and actually doing video editing. Um, also the 570 with the uh, CUDA coordination that they've done with Adobe actually works very good for real-time video editing and since we don't do a lot of After Effects it does pretty much everything we throw up on it in real time. Uh, next question is from Raz Black who is talking about the configuration that we have as far as the radiator in the front. Uh, he says you put the radiator in the front, put the fan so airflow forces it inside across the blades and he's not sure if that's the best idea. I actually thought about this a lot when I was originally parting out the build which way we should have those fans going. We could have them pointing out and pushing air this way, um, which would eject more of it out the front of the case, which would give maybe a little bit better airflow overall, versus pulling in, which is how we have it set up. Um, that does mean that the ambient air pulling across the radiator is actually keeping the inside of the case a bit warmer. Uh, the other option seemed to be to reverse the airflow in the case entirely, in which case I almost would have wanted to, for instance, somehow flip the fan in the power supply, which is the other main fan in the case on the other side of that power supply. Just decided to go with it this way because we'll get um, plenty of cool air for the processor, especially while we're rendering the videos. Uh, it gets fresh air out over the front, which is mainly cooling the processor. Uh, and then that's providing, at least in the test so far, has been providing enough airflow over the rest of the components in the machine to uh, keep it cool enough for our purposes. So. A good suggestion. It was something that I considered, um, but um, since it's working so good as is, I think we're just going to leave it. For the cost and frustration of trying to get all that to fix, fit inside a mini AT ATX case, you're better off buying a high-end laptop, at least if it's for mobile video editing. This is from One Mystic G, and I'm sorry, but the answer is no. I challenge anyone, to, uh, with the exception of like two years from now when there's better mobile video editing hardware, I challenge anyone to build a computer that will have this type a video editing performance in a laptop. I, I, you just don't really see them. If you do see them, they're those big old desktop replacement laptops that get super hot anyway, and you know they're, they're useful, but we like what we've got here. Uh, this is from Subsystems. He said, if you need way better cooling, relocate the SSDs using um, some PCI brackets, and he linked some PCI brackets that you can install in those slots and put SSDs in. Take the bottom panel out, install um, the biggest fans on the bottom of the case blowing air up that we can. Um, actually a really good suggestion. I didn't consider this at all when I was looking at it. I saw oh, hard drive mounts on the bottom. Let's see what we can fit in there. Um, that would have been a really good option for this. I think it's a bit past the point now where we can try it out, but if anyone's looking at something like this in the future, possibly consider that, especially if you're restricted as far as where you can install hard drives. Uh, great suggestion by subsystems, but um, maybe we'll use some of those brackets in a future build. I uh, had a lot of comments about the SSDs we used because people said, well, you can use hard drives and you have much more capacity and I use hard drives for video editing and all that good stuff, which is totally legitimate and we use hard drives for a lot of our video editing machines as well. The point here being though that it's mobile, you can pick it up and move it around. Mechanical hard drives, uh, they're just a lot more dangerous to move them around frequently, uh, especially if they're not shut down properly, which hopefully you never have a problem with. But with the SSDs in here, we never have to worry about you know the drive read heads moving over and scraping across the surface of a platter or anything like that. Plus, they're much lighter, and they use less power, and they generate less heat, so less overall ambient heat in the system. Um, some other folks are talking about hard drive capacity 
SSD capacity, we've uh, got 480 gigs on our RAID array. Uh, and is that enough or is that too much or too little? Um, for what we're going to be using for it, it should be just fine. We typically don't, don't work with a huge amount of raw data, but what we're actually going to be doing is taking our raw data using a laptop, copying that to an external drive first, and then we'll be copying it to here. So we have all the raw data backed up just in case we have some problem with our RAID array, and then in the future we can always rebuild those projects if we need to. Tyler the Geek 28 says, we want benchmarks. There you go, Tyler. Rewind. It should be benchmarks. Uh, some uh, few folks, few folks commented uh, about using different cases. Fractal Design Define Mini, uh, Mini NZXT Vulcan uh, could fit all this hardware. Yes, um, really, it came down. Uh, just so much of this came down to this handle on top. Just even now, we've moved it back and forth a few times. It's just so easy. You pop off a few plugs in the back, pick it up, carry it around wherever you need to go. Uh, there are many ITX cases, micro ITX cases that can fit this hardware. None of them had quite the mobility available from this one. Plus, the Silverstone construction here. Was, was really top notch and uh, we had a great time building it. Finally, my, uh, my favorite comment on this video is from The Wild Horse who says, uh, compare the specs of this PC with a similarly priced Mac Pro, which tons of video, video editors use. This custom PC blows it out of the water. And um, that's my favorite comment on this video from The Wild Horse. So there you have it, uh, a little bit of, of follow-up for our build. Hope you guys enjoyed, learned a little bit more. Also, just uh, so happy that this computer is working so well. We're going to bring it to PAX Heats this weekend. Hopefully, it will work well on the road as well. Um, you might have noticed we didn't have any monitors listed. We have another project that we might go forward with or might not that we want to make like a suitcase that can fold out with monitors inside, something like that. Who knows? Might come through with that, might not. But anyway, uh, that's all for now. Stay tuned for PAX uh, East videos we'll be posting up this weekend. And I uh, hope you enjoyed. I'm done talking. If you want to see more tech videos, please subscribe to our Newegg YouTube channel. And we'll see you next time on Newegg TV.